All right, hey YouTube, this is Jake with MTV Trail Hunt. I uh, just thought I'd get, do a nice review on this Frame Montana that I got from Frame or thehouse.com. I normally like to support my local bike shop, but in this instance, I actually bid on it at a silent auction and won it. Won it. Pretty cool. Um, as you can see, it's a little bit dirty, so I have uh, been riding it for a couple weeks, so I'll be able to give you a little bit of a, a full roundup or a bike check of the whole thing and then tell you how I how I like it and then in um, coming weeks maybe I'll be able to get a uh, trail ride on it um, where I can actually uh, show you the handling and such. Um, I have ridden it now for like I said a couple weeks and I do love the, the full suspension even in the winter time. It's kind of an odd um, uh, platform uh, that people think oh it's a full suspension in the winter time. Um, it's not going to pedal grade, it's going to be hard to dr drive in the snow. Uh, but I've actually found it is fantastic. Um, I've been able to keep up or better most of my friends or my uh, uh, people that I go with or my riding buddies. So anyways here, <clears throat> start talking about the bike. Frame has a full carbon fiber uh, frame, uh, both front frame and the rear triangle. It comes along with the race base, I believe it's the Affect crank with the um, screw-in uh, bottom bracket. So that is nice, I don't have to deal with the uh, press fit. Press fits are great. Um, uh, I do run a PF30 on my other mountain bike, but it, it is simpler to work on these. I don't need to be uh, pushing bearings out and tightening them back in. And, um, you know, I always like to put a new press fit bearing in, uh, bottom bracket in whenever I do change it out, even if you know, it's a newer. So I do like being able to take this in and out. Um, it didn't come along with a chainstay protector, so I did use um, an old tube that I have and wrapped it up. Um, it works out great, a couple zip ties um, hold it in there great. Um, it actually covers the, the port for the internally routed cables. Um, everything on this bike is internally routed, including the rear uh, disc brake. Um, it comes with the uh, SRAM level T brakes. Um, from what I've been riding on them, they seem pretty awesome. Uh, they're not too much different than my old guide RSC brakes. Um, they are a little bit heavier, um, maybe not as much modulation, um, but for winter biking, they seem to be doing just fine. Um, I'll test them out more in the summertime you know, when I'm doing a little bit more downhill and see how they work out. Um, comes along with a, believe it, is a 750 millimeter um, handlebar. Might have to check on that, I can't really remember. Um, and then I went with the race space um, lock on grips to match the bike. Uh, it comes with the frame stem and an FSA headset. Now, the Mastodon fork is a upgrade. Um, I know it's actually, I think it's a little bit cheaper um, when you buy it online or pretty practical to the same price as uh, the RockShox Pluto, but with the rear crown on it, it's actually super stiff. Um, I'm actually talking to Frame right now, we're switching it out, and I'm gonna go with the Pro version instead of the Expert version, um, which will cut a little bit more weight, and it'll let me get a more adjustment for the high and low speed compression. Um, other than that, it's been running great. It's a 150 millimeter through axle, um, Pretty awesome, 180 mil um, post mount on there. So if you're running 180 on the front, no adapter needed, which is great. Stiff, you don't have to worry about anything coming loose there. Um, this is the RockShox Monarch RT, 300 millimeters of travel. Um, it's good. I couldn't say that I might wish for a little bit more travel in the rear, even it being a uh, fat tire bike, because. When it is warmer out, I do like to run a little bit higher pressures um, and do some more um, fun stuff, <laughs> drops and such. And so I just gotta be a little bit more careful so I don't bottom out too bad um, with the really big stuff. But for a normal trail ride, um, you know, blue stuff, maybe getting into some of the techy black stuff, it works just fine. Uh, speaking of the tech and rideability of this bike, this thing is a monster truck going through the tech, through the rock gardens, the roots. Um, it is just, it just kind of rolls right over everything. It's awesome. It gives you a ton of confidence. 
in your abilities. So like picking the right line, you kind of get away with you know not picking the best one out there, but still like kind of push through and uh, make it a really fun ride. Um, that's something I believe that comes along with all fat tire bikes. It just gives you a ton of confidence. Actually, I've had a lot of uh, success doing skinnies or narrow bridges uh, on this bike. I just did one last weekend. It was probably the longest one I've ever did. Uh, still took me a few tries, but I felt super stable on it. And my tires, and, you know, being so wide, they just felt like they just gripped that, you know, that little skinny um, bridge, even if I was on the edge of it. Um, it was pretty awesome. So I do have a lot more confidence doing skinny since riding this bike um, than I ever did on my, you know, all mountain 2.5 inch tire um, bike. Anyways, um, I know it's kind of jumbling, jumping up and jumping around here, um, but uh, oh, let's move on to the C post. This is the Fox Transfer 125 millimeter uh, dropper post. It is fantastic. The modulation in the controller is great. Um, all you have to do, um, you just barely push down and it goes up nice and slow, or you can push. Uh, push it right in and um, it just shoots right up. Um, awesome, I've been using it in the winter time down to zero degrees so far and it's worked great. Um, I'm not sure what it's rated to. Uh, dropper posts uh, in the past have always been typically, um, uh, what do you want to call it, Miss malfunctioning in the winter time. Um, but uh, this one has been awesome. We got a WTB set on here. Uh, it's not my favorite saddle I've ever been on, but it's definitely workable. I mean, I don't find any complaints about it when I'm all riding it. Um, don't come back super chafed or anything either. Uh, move on to the tires. Um, right now, I am running race, um, the framed Wolf Tracks 26 by 4.0, 120 uh, TPI tire. Um, they're great, um, they're supple. They're actually a really nice tire um, from what, uh, what I've had. I've got the the standard frame, uh, frame hubs, which are um, 150 millimeter in the back and 177 spacing in the rear. So it's a little bit uh, of a different spacing, but there are more of these bikes coming out. Um, so you can find uh, wheel sets and uh, hubs in that spacing now, um, which is great. Both front and rear are through axle, so you get the nice rigidity from that as well. Uh, I will be upgrading in the future. Um, I will put out another, another video on that. As soon as I get them, they're gonna be awesome. I'm not gonna say anything about them right now, um, but it will be awesome. Just awesome. A uh, hint to us will be involved. All right. We have a one by 11 set up here with a 32 tooth in the front and 11 to 42 in the rear. That's what I had on my all mountain bike. This bike, it's fine. This is Duluth, Minnesota, where I'm at. Um, there is a lot of elevation change, but nothing like huge mountains that you need to climb up and, you know, super long rides. Um, I've never said, oh man, I wish I had that Eco Granny gear, but, you know, maybe in the future we'll jump up to that 50 tooth just, you know, for, uh, for fun to see how it is. But at the moment, 11 to 42 is just fine for me. Um, with the SRAM NX, uh, rear derailleur, it is clutched, it's pretty, pretty nice. Um, I don't hear a lot of chatter going down the trail, it keeps you pretty quiet. Um, with the NX 11 speed shifter at the front too, um, it seems to be a good system. I have run the XO uh, 1x11 system on my other bike. Awesome system both on both. Really there's not a ton of differences between the two. The NX, it might just be a little less crisp when you're shifting. Um, it's not bad. I mean, between the price differences, um, between the XO and the NX, I mean, I just don't see that much of a, a need to go to the XO unless you really want to feel that smooth, crisp uh, change every single time. Um, I'm, I, I can't say on my other bike, sometimes I don't even feel it at all, um, which is awesome. But with this bike, you know, Maybe in the future I'll upgrade it, like I said. Maybe I'll do the XO 1x12 Eagle, but uh, as of the moment, I see no need to do that. All right, uh, moving on, we have 180 millimeter uh, rotors in the front. 
160 in the rear. So far, I haven't had any complaints with that. Like I said, I'm in Duluth. We have some descent here, but nothing like out in the mountains where you're descending for a half an hour or 45 minutes where we need that heat disbursement and that leverage of braking. Um, I did find on my old fat bike, I had a 200 millimeter or 203 in the front uh, and the 180 in the back. That was nice, gave me a little bit more stopping power, um, but was it really necessary? I don't know, I just had the rotors, so I put them on there to see how I liked it. Uh, all right. I believe that is the whole thing. Um, let me take you for some close-ups on a few things and then uh, yeah, we'll see, see you later. All right. So here, let's look at this Manitou front fork. It's pretty sweet. Um, as you can see, it does have the rear crown on it, which I think is pretty awesome. Um, it gives it a lot more rigidity than the Manitou. I mean, I've put this thing on its side and flexed it, and the thing doesn't move at all. Um, my brother has the blue toe on his bike, and you put it on the side, you can feel the flex. I'm not saying it's a bad setup, but it is definitely um, different. Um, if you like a rigid bike, um, that is definitely uh, something you might want to think about. Um, here you can see it's just got a hex lock system on it, so no quick release. You're going to have to carry a tool with you if you're going to take a tire off uh, in the woods. Um, maybe you get a pinch flat or something. It's pretty sweet. You got uh, here's your air um, uh, adjustment right there for the uh, for the negative air chamber, and then over here you have your uh, your rebound dampening um, rebound adjustment. All right. As you can see here, here's the uh, front of the bike. It's uh, got that nice and focused up for you. Uh, level T brakes seems pretty awesome. Um, they do have some reach point adjustment on there. Um, I haven't ha had to bleed them yet. Um, so far they've been pretty awesome. Um, as you can see here, I do have my two um, light brackets. I can just kind of show you what those are here real quick. All right, these are my two lights, um, Blitzu or let's see here, Oter. Now these two are off Amazon. You can get them for about 15 bucks a piece. They say they're about 320 lumens. Um, I think they're pretty awesome for 15 bucks a piece. They're rechargeable. Um, they're they're pretty awesome. Um, they got three different modes, and I like to have two so I can put one closer to them to my front tire and then one further away so that way I don't get caught looking right in front of my tire. They got a few different uh, modes. Um, pretty awesome. Alright, here's the race face. Uh, I can't remember, full Nelson grips. They got uh, lock-ons on both sides. Um, they're pretty sweet. Um, so far I like a minimalist uh, grip. I don't like a lot of padding or anything. I like to feel connected to the bike, so pretty awesome. Um, let me show you this dropper post here. All right, so as you can see here, I have it down a little bit right now, and as I just give it a little bit of pressure, you can see how it just kind of goes up nice and smooth. Um, it's pretty sweet. There, let me put it down for you here. Sorry, I didn't get a nice look at my wall. I call this the conference room because you're actually in the conference room in my office. Um, right here, you can see it's down all the way. And just giving it a little bit, you can make it go up as slow as you want, or you can go up nice and fast. And one last thing here, I'll show show you how fast it goes up. So it goes up pretty decently fast. It doesn't doesn't grab you in the butt <laughs> like some of them do, um, which I kind of like. All right. Here's the Rock Shocks Monarch RT3 100 millimeter shock. Um, it's pretty cool. The one thing about this bike that I think that they're addressing in the future is the tolerance for this uh, this shock. They didn't quite get right. If you can see here, um, the air cert on here rubs a little bit against the frame and has chipped the paint 
right in here. Um, that kind of bothers me because I'm kind of a little bit of a perfectionist when it comes to my bikes. Um, but, uh, you know, what can I say? They said that they have the same problem on the other ones. It's not unique to my bike, but they are addressing it. So I'm assuming that the new models or the new year, um, they fixed that. I know that they're, they're switching up the name from the Montana to the Bear Tracks, or if they're keeping them both, I'm not sure, but I know that they're changing things around. Frames are a pretty awesome company. So when they see something wrong, they fix it. All right. All right, here is the rear of the bike, drivetrain NX. I did switch out the uh, the little end cap for a blue one just because I like to match things up. Um, yeah, not much to see back there. Um, All right, so there's one other thing I want to show you guys. As you can see, this is where the cables run into the rear triangle. They come out through a little port exactly like this down here. It runs both uh, like that on both sides for the uh, hydraulic brakes and for the rear derailleur. So nothing is run. I do like that. A lot of them nowadays have the cables come out underneath down here and then they kind of run them up and over or behind. I don't like that because if you do hit a rock strike down here, you're a good chance of um, putting a hole in your cable and then that will put, the, put an end to your day because I'm pretty sure you're not carrying your bleeding tools out to the uh, trail with you. So I do like that. Uh, as you can see, I did put um, some crank boot protectors on my crank. I do like to protect those. I do like rock gardens. Um, so uh, if I don't put them on there, my cranks end up looking like uh, they went through a horror show. And they do kind of match the Mastodon Red. Um, so, all right. Well, this was Jake with MTB Trail Hunt. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it informational. If you have any questions or comments below, let me know and I'll definitely try and answer them. And I hope to see you out on the trail. All right, see ya.